On today's edition of the Screensavers, he bet his job he'd see spam decrease online. Is he completely nuts? The man's a lawyer. <laughs> Plus, get your fix, your Buffy fix on the net. A true Screensaver Buffy fan shows you. And Leo brings you the trinity of digital music iTunes, iPods, and iMusic. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's the Screensavers! Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Screensavers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. This is it. This is it. This is where you get the innies and the outies. The, the last show ever. ever. What? I thought we were just going to watch The Matrix every day until uh, we all fall apart. We saw it this morning. We saw it this morning. Not, well, you got you got to like a movie a lot when you get up. I got up at 6 o'clock to see the 9 a.m. show of The Matrix. I got up before 10. <laughs> just getting up to see it. Yeah. And you liked it? You, you had know, mixed opinion. I'm all over the map on it at this point. Oh, I'm going to see I it again this red. weekend. Jesse, did you? You didn't see it. Did you see it? I, some people. Work. Some people have to work around here. Oh, you meow know, I have to hold it down at the fort for you guys. But I'm glad you had a fun time playing. Yeah, Fufu, did you see it? <laughs> Dude, I'm feeling guilty now. It's like, Sarah, did you? Kevin, did you? No. No. It's just you and me. <laughs> Everybody else had to stay and work. Oh, well, anyway, no. do see it. It's I. I you know what? If you I like none the of Matrix, your misgivings. You have to see it, period. End you have of discussion. Because you got to find out what happens. They're going to make a lot of money. My prediction, you know why? You have to see it at least twice to even know what happened. You know what's scary? Opened up 3,000 theaters by Friday night. It's going to be on 8,000, excuse me, 3,000 screens. Friday night, 8,000 screens. And they'll, yeah, and they'll still be sold out probably yeah. through the weekend. It really is worth seeing. You must see it. Especially if you're a geek, as we know you all are. Let's take a look at the top technology related stories of the day. I Number one, of course, the Matrix Reloaded opened. Yeah. And uh, that's the biggest story that was of the like day. last night. Yeah, 10, 10 p.m., I think, some of the people from the staff went. In fact, a little later on, we're going to see Sarah and Kevin were walking the streets last night. And they're going to, uh, they're going to show us what they, huh? They're going to show us what they found. I guess that's tomorrow. Is that tomorrow you're going to show that? Yeah, they're, they, talk to, they talk to people. A lot online. of confused faces looking in our direction. Yeah. We'll let you know when that's coming up. <laughs> we're the ones that got up early. What are you doing? All right, the top story of the day. Call it strategy or healthy competition, but Microsoft has been slamming Linux. Internal emails from a Microsoft executive said, under no circumstances should you lose a, a buy to Linux. Under no circumstances. In fact, they put their money where their mouth is in the big corporate accounts. They're saying, we will pay people. We will give people rebates. We will give people price cuts. We will, we will get the buy in every government and corporate buy over Linux, and we're going to make that our, our, our goal in life. This, uh, this memo circulated was picked up by the International Herald Tribune. Now, if, if I were, say, an uh, investor in Microsoft who owns shares in Microsoft, wouldn't I want to see this sort of due diligence Absolutely. in their efforts to make a profit? Absolutely. They have a fiduciary responsibility to you and all the shareholders. I'm not a shareholder, To though. strangle the competition. If, I were. if you were. To strangle the competition. You know, it's a thin line there. Well, it's, a, it's only a thin line until you have a, a monopoly. Right. And then everything changes because you're not, you know, you, you, there are limits on what you could do right. owning 99% of the business compared to somebody like Apple, which only owns 3% of the business. But Microsoft, they figured out, was a monopoly, but really nothing changed. Yeah, well, that's, I, okay. don't get me started. <laughs> don't, don't get me started. I gotta, actually, the interesting thing is they're not alone because Sco, who, who owns the right. uh, trademark to Unix, is going after uh, not only IBM now, but they sent threatening letters to 1,500 big corporations using Linux saying, you know, we own that. We own, we own the rights to that. And uh, you, you should really not buy that. I think they're co co cahoots with the James Altshin or something I over at Microsoft. I think. Well, that's, in fact, that's what people are saying. They're just trying to get somebody to buy them. <laughs> Please that's buy so us. Cute. We're going to sue IBM for a billion dollars unless you buy us. Which IBM can pay out without burping. All right. Oh, well. Mm, Saddle Times right. says iNews maybe, iTunes maybe have to start singing a new tune. Why? Because they've been 
hat. Oh yes, this is actually quite interesting. A man named Neo. Neo. <laughs> <laughs> he has figured out a way to take iTunes out of the matrix. Well, yeah. Well, iTunes allows you know software users to stream their music over a LAN. We're going to show that a little later on. Exactly. Not just a LAN. You can stream it over the internet from other people's systems. Yes. Sounds a lot like, but it's not quite the same thing as peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Although it is a form of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Well, here's the here's the it's thing. Not you know, trading. The, it's you know. <laughs> it's it, it took like literally five minutes before people figured out. Not only can you share it over a LAN, right. you can share it over the internet. But that was still okay because you just were listening to somebody right. else's music. You weren't copying it. It took a little longer, like seven days, for somebody to write a program that copies the music and puts it on your hard drive. That's what 196 hours? <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, the music companies are, are saying we got to take a little bit of a look at this. Yeah, especially Apple. Like Apple's trying to create this new online business model for selling music and has everybody in the music industry all fired up about how they're managing copyright issues. Yeah, well, I'm rooting for them. I think one of the reasons the big music companies said Apple could do it is they said there's, it only works on Macs right now. Right. So that's only 3%. We don't have to worry. And it's a kind of a trial. But well, did nobody at Apple tell them that they were planning on putting a PC uh, version well, out later so this year? so far down the road. The music industry is not what's known for long-term yeah, thinking. Six months, long-term <laughs> thinking. Months. Oh, that's almost a quarter and a half. My God, Ooh. we got plenty of time. I'm going to give a demonstration a little bit of the of new the iTunes Music Store, which how it works with your iPod, to. and how you share the music. But I will not teach you how to steal the music. You'll have to You'll figure have that to out. You'll have to go online to find yeah, that out. It won't take too long, I'm sure. That said, it was announced today that police will use new IBM digital video systems to tape and store traffic stops and arrests. This is amazing. It's pretty wild. Essentially, a hard drive-based digital video recording system that'll basically, they'll have the camera in the car, they'll have a hard drive that plugs into the car, and giant terabyte servers back at the... What do you call the pl police station? The, the police station stadium. house. Don't you remember that when it's you were there? It's been a long time yeah, since okay. I've been to one. You know, it fades after a while. You remember your time there. Taping's not anything new, but now imagine it could actually be searchable. They could keep all of it stored online, the giant terabyte servers. You could, well, you know what? You could automatically stream it to cops if you wanted and to. And that's one of the reasons they want to do it. Oh, so God. That they <laughs> You know, the only people who watch those shows is people who have never been handcuffed. Bad boy, Loses bad its boy, charm. Bad boy. So our question of the day related to this. Yeah. Uh, does recording police activity protect your rights, erode your rights, or can't we just all get along? I guess it kind of depends on who's doing the recording, doesn't it? And what's going on while it's being recorded. Yes. And whether or not the recording accidentally gets destroyed. <laughs> Remember the Rosemary Woods stretch? They get the little, the, we'll press that delete button right over there. <laughs> All right, go to the screensavers.com, cast your vote, and let us know what you think about recording what's going on from the squad car. Today's Thursday, you know what that means? It's time for the Screensavers Land Party! Powered by NVIDIA! Today we're back to the beaches, Battlefield 1942 demo version I lost contact with an outpost. from Electronic Arts. You lost contact from the outpost! Position secured! Oh, oh thank goodness. goodness. <laughs> Servers what are fired up and raring to go. <laughs> And remember, if you registered earlier this week, you'll be playing against our crew, the Screensavers team. Which includes... A man in a hat, Joshua <laughs> Brentano. Who is that in the hat? Sarah, please don't <laughs> is it? kill me. <laughs> oh, oh for hey. I, what are you, aren't you, shouldn't you be on the camera? What are you... <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you did... <laughs> I, well, nobody saw him. You didn't see him. He's not there. He's not playing a game. The mysterious man in the hat. Why am I suddenly looking <laughs> That's his camera That's right funny. there. Uh, That's uh, funny. If you didn't register to play, go do it right now. We'll see you next Thursday at the Screensavers <laughs> Land Party. Both of us? Mark joins on the phone from Goochland, Virginia. Hello, Mark. Hi, Leo. How are you today? Hey, Patrick. How's it going? Hey, going good. Good. Um, I was on the internet the other day. You were? Yes. Wow. And I saw uh, Yoshi and Kevin's message boards. Yes, they both have I, message boards now. Yeah, and they look really cool, and I wanted to know how I could make them. How did they do it? Uh, now, Kevin has a dark side message board, <laughs> dark side message and that's what he's calling it because he's looking for dark side tips. Oh, look, it's a little poodle. That's the poodle he had when he was a kid. What's, it's a putt dog. What's the name of that poodle there, Kevin? What? Cherie. 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 There's his message boards. Yep. You know, you can. I'll tell you one thing. You can always tell what software people are using. If you go down to the bottom, you'll almost always see, in this case, a copyright message or a powered by message. In this case, he's using... PHPBB, which is actually great free software, it does require that you have MySQL and PHP running on your server. Do you have those two? I don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see what Yoshi's running. We're going to go to Yoshi's forums. These are all about hardware mods. Let's scroll down to the bottom here. See what he's. I bet he's using the PHPBB too. 
powered by, look at that, PA, there is unanimity in the geek community. He's also using PHPBB. Is, uh, are you mic'd, Kevin? Yeah, I'm mic'd. Oh, okay, because we couldn't hear you earlier. I was huh. just stalling so you get a mic on. Um, why did you choose PHPBB? Well, it's free, and uh, I don't, it's great software. Everybody else uses it in the community, and it's, it's reliable. It, I can handle a ton of users. I love it. Here are a couple of things to look for when you're running message board software. Speed, you mentioned, is very important, and ease of administration is also very important. Things like the ability to easily ban users or block users, uh, to easily add users, that kind of thing. And you find all the features that your users are, want, are also there? Definitely. Yeah. I think that uh, I ha actually have moderators that I can add, so I can assign certain users that can take care of the groups for me. And they only have a certain level of pri uh, privileges, so they can't actually delete anything in my forums, but they can like right. go over the forums and edit posts and things like that. Right. Cool. Is Yoshi around or is he gone? Uh, he went to get some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's, he's out and about. Well, he would say the same thing. Now, he started his boards before you did. Did you uh, ask him what he thought before you used PHPBB? I did, because there was a couple of them. You have your own. Which ones do you use? Well, I use a commercial one, which is actually very similar, called UBB, uh, from Infopop.com. And Now, I love UBB. It's only like 150 bucks. It's not that expensive. Right. Uh, but I really love it for its, number one, for its speed. But it also, like yours, is running on MySQL and PHP, which are notably speedy, because it's got a database backend. Um, and I've been very happy. And so you asked Yoshi. You didn't want to spend the money, obviously. Yeah, so. I asked Yoshi. There's also some other ones out there. There's VBulletin that's yep. also really popular. A lot popular. of people like VBulletin. I don't like VBulletin. I think it's more like for teenagers. It's got all those bells and whistles and buttons and knobs and doohickeys and stuff. And I just think that's... Of course, Mark, you're a teenager, right? Yes. Yeah, so maybe it's for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at VBulletin for sure. That's free also. And okay. look at PHPBB. But you know what, yeah. Mark? You've got to find out what your web host can support. Okay. And uh, VBulletin, I think... Where, where do I go to do that? Uh, you call your uh, ISP. Do you have it? Where, where is your site hosted? Um, I, I use uh, free sites like Angel Fire. Yeah, see, stuff. you won't be able to do this on Angel Fire or GeoCities or any of those free sites because they don't have the back end. Okay. See, so right. you're going to actually have to go somewhere and you're going to look for a web host that supports MySQL and PHP. I don't know what you would do. You know, there are, there are, um, oh, Yoshi's back. Yeah, I get coffee yeah. too. Yeah, we, we already talked about you, believe it or not. Which one? Uh, which one? <laughs> That's me right there? Shit, All right. <laughs> Where's Jessica's? Where's her green tea? Oh, and we got the... I'm sorry. Don't mind us, Mark. I try to stay healthy. I go with the green tea. All right. We got the Aussie Everybody cookie for Allison. Send me like green tea. All right. Who had the Big Mac? Okay. So, Mark, those are a couple of choices, but you really have to have the support. I can't believe we just got coffee on the air. <laughs> and, you know, Starbucks isn't even paying for this. Hey, neither was Budweiser, but they got the slot, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no kidding. Oh, nice right. jacket, Yoshi. Is Good. there a way I can, like, uh, go to, like, a free, like, one that would go, that would work on Angel Fire? Do you know like of that? anything that will work on Angel Fire? I don't know of anything, Kevin, that will work on Angel He's probably going to have to pay a few extra dollars a month in order to get that database support. Like MySQL. Yeah, MySQL. PHPBB actually supports several different databases. It does MySQL. Oh, okay. It'll do uh, um, uh, any t standard SQL database and also uh, Access. It also does Access databases. And, and there's well. your coffee. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Mark, so it's not you know, running a message board is not something for the freebie guy. Right. It's, okay. It takes a lot more power. Well, I, you it, know, it, I, may be, it may be $12 a month worth of power. Well, it depends on how busy. Yeah. Mine, there's a gigabyte of downloads a day. That's some, that's some cash. If I were paying for this, it would cost a lot of money. So I thank Annex.com for providing the server. They deserve the, uh, the thank. And uh, thanks to Infopop for giving yeah. me the software. But, you know, I, it's not free. It's really great to do. Yeah. But it's a lot of work, and it's going to take more than a free uh, server to do it. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate the call. Do, do it, though. By all means, I encourage you to do it. Don't go anywhere. we got the best links for Buffy fans on the way. And after the break, he believes in a new congressional bill to stop spam so much, he said he'd quit his job if it didn't work. Hey. Larry Lessig tells us more when we return. He's a professor at Stanford Law School, the founder of the Stanford Center for the Internet and Society, plus the author of many seminal, important books like The Future of Ideas and Code and Other Laws in Cyberspace. One of our favorite guests, Larry Lessig. Dr. Lawrence Lessig, welcome back. It's good to have you Thanks uh, for on the show. Me. And uh, there, every time you come, there's so many things to talk about. You've really made it your business to kind of be a watchdog on, um, on the public's interests on the Internet, right? Well, some of the interests, the interests relating to uh, 
free speech and intellectual property and the areas where corporations are interfering with the opportunity for people to innovate and create on the internet. And yet you've kind of gotten involved in spam, which is in some ways against free speech, right. at least against the free speech that people want to send as junk mail. How does that fit in? Well, you know, first of all, I'm extraordinarily frustrated by it. It's a personal uh, vendetta. Yeah, it's a yeah. personal yeah. Uh, insult. 80% yeah. of my mail is now spam. Mine um, too. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, it struck me, this is the first area where Congress could actually do some good. Congress is regulated in a thousand areas where they've done harm. Here's an area where they could do some good, and it seemed to me there's a relatively simple way to solve the problem. What, well, you came up with a proposal, which is now a, a, a bill that's been proposed by Zoe Lofgren that's from, right. uh, from right. San Jose. What was your proposal? Well, the... All the proposals, the most important flaw so far has been there's been no effective way to enforce it because spammers know that people don't have time to go sue spammers. Um, so this proposal says you gotta do two things. First, you gotta label your spam with an appropriate label like ADV saying it's advertisement. Um, but secondly, if you fail to uh, label your spam, then the first person to find you gets paid a bounty from the FTC, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, and the idea here is that there's a lot of people out there who would love to trace down spammers who don't obey the rules. And if the bounty is high enough, then spammers will see it doesn't pay not to obey the rule. And if they obey the rule, then it's going to be very simple for people to pick whether they want to receive spam or not. Now, uh, what is the prospect for this bill right now? There are many, actually, anti-spam bills in Congress right now. What is the prospect for this well, one? Well, there's been a lot of excitement around it, um, but uh, it's still pretty frustrating. The standard response of Congress is they see a problem, they decided it is a problem now, now they want to go out and execute spammers. So, we, well, in fact, somebody proposed, I think a congressman proposed, that they use the RICO acts, which are right. the uh, racketeering acts uh, used against the mob, against spammers, which means I guess they could confiscate their houses and That's right. Property. So it's, it's a standard overreaction, uh, but it's an overreaction that won't work because, again, they don't deal with the problem of how do you enforce it because they still depend upon, you know, fed, uh, federal prosecutors to go track down spammers. But, you know, federal prosecutors have a war on drugs or a war on terrorism or whatever the war is today that they're fighting. Um, they're not going to have time to be tracing down spammers. It's uh, two small potatoes, really. That's right. Let's face it. I mean, it's, uh, these guys aren't big enough. Right. Aren't you worried about vigilanteism on the other side, when the public is going after all these people? Yeah, that's an important concern. But um, this doesn't give anybody rights to break into a computer. It doesn't give anybody rights to do anything other than just do, be a little investigator, trace down who the person is. You've bet your job on this. You said, I will quit if this doesn't work. If they implement this, and Declan McCullough, not, um, uh, not an ally, but uh, often a, an adversary of mine, if Declan McCullough says it doesn't work, then I'll quit my job. You're going to use, well, that's bold of you. You're going to let Declan be the judge. That's right. And uh, how, what's the time frame on this? <laughs> well, we haven't nailed down exactly how long uh, I have before I have to quit. But, um, but I trust quit. you. Please don't quit. You just, you're about to finish your house. This would be a bad time to quit. Stay here, all right? We need you. Let's move on. Spam, of course, spam is a, a, a very much hits home. But an issue that is a little harder for people to get, and yet maybe is as important, if not more important, is the issue of copyright law right. in this country. You just told me before the show that no new... Uh, material will enter the public domain from 1923 on, uh, it, it, for another 40 years or so. Right. And this is because Disney and other c people who hold home valuable copyrights are basically preventing the copyrights from uh, expiring. That's right. Our Constitution says copyrights are supposed to be for limited times. Um, and uh, for most of our history, what, is that, what that has meant is after an average of 30 years, copyrights enter the public domain. Something like the lifetime of the uh, owner plus a few right. years. Well, now right? what Congress has done is uh, 11 times in the last 40 years, it has extended the term for existing copyrights. And now the average copyright is 95 years for corporate works or life of the author plus 70 years for regular works. Mm. But what that means is nothing enter enters the public domain. Why and is it important that things enter the public domain? Well, when things enter the public domain, people can take it and build on it. They can make new works on it. They can, they can make libraries out of this material and, and share it uh, easily. Brewster Kahle's Internet Archive wants to take all books that are not commercially exploited and make them available on the Internet for free. He's willing to pay for it himself, but he can't because the copyright restrictions are so high to make it impossible for him to get access to it. In this. effect, the few companies that own valuable copyrights are burying our cultural heritage. That's exactly right. These 98% of things that really have no value. That's right. Only 2% of the material in the first 20 years affected by this actually has any continuing commercial value at all. But the 98% gets locked up because of just the interest of the 2%. Now, we've proposed uh, a, a bill that says basically 50 years after something's published, a copyright owner pays $1. If they pay $1, they get copyright for as long as Congress has given it. But if they don't pay the dollar, the work passes into the public domain. So it's not even worth a dollar to them 
then the work will pass into the public domain. And given historical estimates, that would mean 98% of work would pass into the public domain. Because it's not even worth a buck. That's right. Um, but even this proposal, we're fighting to get introduced in Congress because the lobbyists have already taken their aim at this. What? Because because they're so extreme in this idea What's wrong that nobody that? should tamper at all with their perpetual control. What could people do who want to support this? I think this is a great idea, and it, it's a perfect compromise. Right. Well, if you go to our website, eldred.cc, just E-L-D-R-E-D.cc, um, you can see the proposal, you can see some information about it, and uh, you can join up in this campaign to try to get somebody in Congress to introduce it. And once we get somebody in Congress to introduce it, we have an opportunity to talk about it and get uh, other people to focus on it. Because I think most people's re reaction is exactly yours. It's crazy. And this Why is not? perfect. This yeah. protects the people like Disney That's who right. want to preserve their copyright, right. but lets the rest of it become our property where, where it belongs. What's going on with the Creative Commons? Because that's another form of copyright that's starting to sweep the internet. Cory Doctorow used it to copyright his last his book, his, his novel. Tell me about Creative Commons. So create, the idea of Creative Commons is that people aren't all like Hollywood. They don't want to control all of their rights. They're more interested in some of their rights being protected and giving right. a bunch of their uh, other rights away. So we've produced very cheap licenses, free licenses that we give people that they can attach to their content that basically says you can use our my content for non-commercial use or you can use my content as long as you give me attribution and then the content is licensed under this much freer form of license so it's a way of liberating some copyrights rather than um, either insisting on total control or the public domain yeah my blog and my website don't have particular value but I've used the Creative Commons copyright for them just as a statement to say this is how things should be done. I'm working on my publishers because I'd like to make sure that my books are done that way. It didn't hurt Corey, did it? No, it helped Corey. And it's in fact, it, um, another great uh, example is Peter Weiner published his book. Uh, his, when his book Free For All went out of print, he put it up under a Creative Commons license and then he watched used book prices for his book. After the book went up under a Creative Commons license and it was available for free online, used bookstore prices went up for mm. his book. And that just demonstrates that spread the information, more people have interest in your work, you'll actually have more demand for what exactly you want. Whenever you talk, it always makes sense to me. I just wish people up in Capitol Hill would start listening yeah. to Larry Lessig. If you want to know more, lessig.org is your site, L-E-S-S-I-G dot O-R-G. I'm sure you have links to all this stuff. That's right. And Larry's great blog, which I read re religiously, is there. His blog is useful because it just keeps you up to date on, on what the big issues are. Uh, Larry, please don't quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, you have a place here with us, all right? Great. Can't pay as much as Stanford does, I'm afraid. Hey, thanks for joining us, and okay. please thanks come back again. If you want to know more about Dr. Lessig's work, of course, we have a link as well at thescreensavers.com. Everything you can uh, find there, including links to his, his books and other projects he's uh, working on. Stay put, folks. Coming up next, our Buffy fanatic. Heather is going to watch out for the vampire, show you the way to some Buffalicious links. She got him! When the screensavers continues. Welcome back to the screensavers. Got my cookie, got my coffee, and I'm ready to enjoy the show. Jessica! Hi, how are you? I'm good. Why the sad face? Do I have a sad no, face? No, but they told me to say that to you. I, d I have no idea why. No, I'm feel I'm very Buffy's stoked. Ending. Because this... Oh, that sad Buffy's face. Buffy's ending in a week. <laughs> because Heather's the sad. one with a sad no, face. Look at how sad yeah. she is. Well, she's a bona fide, you know, Buffy connoisseur. Yeah, a a buffer. Buffer. Is that mm -hmm. a buffer, we call that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Buffer. laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the series is ending in a week. Is it? And for us Buffy fans, it's a very sad week. Oh my. All right. Well, yes. I'm going to let you two, I'm going to get my coffee and my cookie. I'm going to have a seat. I'm going to let you two fill us in on what we can do about the end. Well, thank you. Enjoy Buffy. the sugar rush. Oh, I will. We'll in join a moment you in now. a sec. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. So, so, Miss Thing, why do you love Buffy so much? It is a very sad thing that the Buffy it is very sad, series but is ending, but. It's okay because I have turned to the net to, find, to get my fix. But, yes. Um, I love Buffy so much because it's a story of a superhero. Yes. I would say that's the biggest thing. Um, the um, characters, their personalities are very well developed. Mm -hmm. um, the dialogue is very witty. Mm -hmm. The weaponry is really inventive. Mm -hmm. um, the demons are very, very creative. Very creative um, demons. And they trace back the, the mythology. They have it's these kind really of like Pat and Leo, books. very creative demons. They Don't are very mythology. creative demons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, I would say that's... That's that's just a, a preface okay. for you. So let's run down some of your favorite sites, your okay. favorite Buffy sites that you'll be able to go to after the show is done. This is all things philosophical on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And Angel, actually. That's the 
spin-off series. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, this is if you're a real, really, really geeky. If you want to deconstruct and analyze the characters, okay. um, you know, the episodes, um, like you can s check out the, the metaphysics, like on demons, right? Um, Back souls to demons. and ghosts, right. rituals and spells, witches, <laughs> uh, mental powers. I mean, everything that is tied into Gods every episode, you can okay. research this. Also, um, the philosophies represented. Right. Um, they they deconstruct the characters um, in relation to so this is the, the philosophers, like the big philosophers, like Kierkegaard and. Can't and so Buffy is strange. like a religion for a lot of folks out there. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi girls. <laughs> Go ahead, we're enjoying this. It's, good. it's like class. <laughs> so tell um, us why Buffy is like a religion. It's like a religion, I think, because one of the reasons is um, the dialogue is just it's tailored to each character. Mm -hmm. Each character has some sort of corny, witty dialogue, mm -hmm. and um, like for instance, Buffy when she slays mm -hmm. um, a vampire, mm -hmm. she says something corny to like you know throw them off Give and me so an she example. can slam. Um, well, on this website, you can, um, if you go to characters, uh -huh. you can find specific things that the, each character says, like for instance, let's say Spike. Yeah, Spike, Spike is we really, really Spike. cool. He, like for instance, he says, um, I fed off a flower person at Woodstock. Okay. Um, <laughs> who do you kill for fun around here? Here, kitty, kitty. Um, you have to really watch the shows for these to really mean anything to you, but mm -hmm. you, they have every single character over the, all seven, seven seasons. Uh -huh. um, so you can get all your lingo right there. Yeah. Class, right do you here. have any questions? I've never seen Buffy ever. That's not true. No, We've I've never seen the this. show. No, I saw oh. the original movie with some other actor. You must. Who was she? Like she wasn't good. Christy who? <laughs> she wasn't good. I want to see the, with the show. Where can I see it? Get, buy, get the DVDs. Just oh, rent okay. the DVDs on Netflix. Oh. First three seasons are out on DVD. Now. Oh, good. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm excited. So, um, I have a million, million links on a the million website. million, gazillion, because we have another Buffy devotee, Josh Lawrence, that has just put a ton <laughs> of links up on the site for fans, you know, of Buffy fans and such. So go there, because, there, again, there's a ton of links, including fan forums, spoiler sites, and just buffalicious everything, extravaganza, mm. right there at mm. thescreensavers.com. Mm -hmm. So us girls are going to send it back to you boys, you busy oh, no. boys. What oh, are you going to do minute. now? You have to set. No. You guys got a show. Don't go Hello? anywhere. You can, can your CPU conflict with your wireless access our next caller uh -huh. wants to know uh, uh, that's my still to come. and still to come uh, leo's gonna give you the trinity of digital music itunes ipods mm, and iMusic true. coming up mm. when the screensavers carries on <laughs> she can dance she can dance you just a night you're born behind feel 100 to the top Oh, the land party continues. It's going on right now, and they're having a good time in there. Welcome to the Screen Savers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, upgrade the style of your blog by boosting somebody else's style. Sarah's going to show you how. Why, Sarah Christina Lane, I'm shocked. Shocked. <laughs> And right now, you're going to be even more shocked. Because well, who's Leo that? <laughs> what am I, Chop Hi, Hi, Lindsay. Hi. How are you? Hey. Why don't we check in with the fine folks over at Tech Live to see what's coming up tonight? I think that would be a great idea, news guys. News anchor, Lindsay Aaron. God. All right, let me ask you this. Are you guys psyched about the new Matrix film? Are you guys, are you going to see it? We already saw it this morning. Ooh, um, how psyched are we? Let's see, 9 o'clock this morning, we were in line. Nice. Yeah. To see it, and we loved it. Did you see it? I'm seeing it tonight. I'm very excited You're about love it. it. And Can't I'm be that alone, excited. See? You didn't see it last night or this morning. Whoa! I'm not even going to take that bait. <laughs> I'm not even going to take that. Let's just move on from here. Let me tell you about sci-fi fans in general. They have been frothing over the mouth, uh, at the mouth, that is, over sequels to the X-Men, the Matrix, all these movies, and rightly so. But as a result, a long-awaited third installment of The Terminator has slipped under the radar. And it's very sad. But we're going to change all that tonight. We're going to take you behind the scenes of this summer's dark horse blockbuster, T3, The Rise of the Machines. We're going to talk to Arnold. We're going to check out the new Terminator, who's really a Terminatrix. And a lot more tonight on Tech Live, right after the screensavers. Till then, we're right back at you, boys. Thank, Thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay. Thank you very much. Jinx by me, Coke. And that's what's coming up tonight on Tech Live, right after what? this show. You know, in my day, 
If you wanted music to be portable, you'd put the LP on the turntable, you'd clean it with the dishwasher first, of course, because if you don't clean it with the dishwasher, it's going to have fuzz balls on it, and then you'd put it on a cassette, and then you'd carry the cassette out to the car. You know, when I was young, yeah? we actually had portable record players, and they were <laughs> monophonic. You'd carry it with a little handle, yeah. and my record collection filled the wall, right? You were a DJ. That was, of course, in my day, Debbie Boone was the number one hit. Hey! That's a whole other, hey, I remember her, don't you? I remember her. You remember her? <laughs> yeah, Aunt Debbie, wasn't Aunt it? Debbie. Aunt Debbie. Mm -hmm. You oh, light do up my <laughs> life. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> if you sing too much, we got to pay somebody. Oh, yeah, we'll have to money. pay Aunt Debbie some money. Well, well digital music anyway. has changed everything. everything. <laughs> Napster and MP3 made it possible for you to bring your tunes with you everywhere on a little uh, MP3 player. Don't forget the hard work and hardware manufacturers that made those portable uh, MP3 Absolutely. Players. And, and, of course, let's not forget the fact that the, no more scratching records. The yeah. quality, some people say it wasn't as good, but I couldn't hear the difference. And it's getting better all the time. Well, I have to say, what I'm excited about now is Apple has taken it to the next step, and that's what Apple's very good at. It's kind of making these evolutionary changes to something that was already a revolution. In this case, it's iTunes, the iMusic Store, and the iPod, the kind of holy trinity of music. I gotta ask, did you have to cut and paste in the 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong Elvis cover art? No, it comes that way. Is hey, let's see if Debbie Boone's in here. <laughs> Are you, you light up my life? I am, on I am on iTunes. This is the iTunes music store. And this is my account. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to buy. Oh, I'm sorry. Debbie's it's, not it's on it. It's a Y. Oh, is it a Y? Okay. Well, I'll just put Boone in because we can get the whole family. Oh, yeah. You think Bring him on. You think Grandpa's in there? I don't know. Well, I see, that's one of the weird explain. things I have to tell you about the, uh, oh, In a Metal Mood, my favorite LP. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's proud of that one. This oh. is... <laughs> he is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me see if Debbie's in here. You know, I don't know if Debbie's in here. Aunt Debbie may not be in here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the music store. Now, there are some weird... Uh, features to this, like, okay, great, I found Pat Boone, but can I find the Beatles? Well, amazingly enough, there's only one Beatles record in this whole store, wow. and it's a bootleg. Apparently, some of the licensing deals were maybe a little uh, scant. In fact, have I found any Beatles? I found one Beatles song, Cry for a Shadow. It's this one Beatles album is the only Beatles album they have in the whole store. But let me show how, how easy it is to buy it. Click Buy Song, put in the password. And I wouldn't even have to do that, frankly, if I didn't click that remember, but I know that Fufu would steal all my LPs if I did that. <laughs> foo. Oh, Foo. Oh, and now look, I've purchased, whoops, I, if I put the right pad, well, I won't do it, I don't really want But that. you get the idea, folks. Now, and then it copies right over to my iPod. Now, here's the thing we were talking about earlier. You can also share this music. Now, ostensibly, I think Apple's plan right. was sharing it over the LAN. Local. Over your local network, so which you can do with up to three computers. Look at everybody else's. But look what's happened. Let's go over back to uh, Safari here. Spy Mac has a music area, and so does this site called Share iTunes. These are people sharing their iTunes with the public internet. Now, this isn't, they're not actually trading the files, they're just letting people stream them over the internet. Yes. Presumably. In we, fact, there is software out there that will let you steal a file. And that's, really? Yeah, that's kind of where Apple's now getting in a little bit of Dutch. But these are all people, and by the way, I'm on here too. There's that a are phrase you don't hear all the time, a little Dutch, bit of Dutch. A little bit of Dutch. <laughs> I hope Apple solves this. I don't want the record industry to shut it down because, frankly, I think this is... The future. As, it's the future. The one thing that's missing is right now this is major labels, major artists. I want to see Apple make this accessible to independent artists, to any artist that Black wants flag. to sell their music. Exactly. One side dummy record. Because this is the, 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 the be-all and end-all music distribution. <laughs> yeah. No more disc washer, no more shelf. I have, on this, this is a 30 gig iPod, mm -hmm. 7,500 songs. I have literally three weeks of non-repeating music in here. It's awesome. I'm still going to own the CDs as long as I can. Well, that's because you're an old-fashioned kind of guy. And because I can move them to any format I want. Well, that's true, and we'll talk about that at another date. We'll, that we'll, might be a dark we'll, tip. We won't get in trouble. <laughs> Did you enjoy that, ladies? It is wonderful. Are you, are you enjoying my coffee? Creamy wonderfulness. <laughs> <laughs> Check out my article. It's at thescreensavers.com. Patrick, stay where I you are. say one thing. We have the best darn job in the world. Yes, we do. Stay where you are. Coming up, we're going to check in with our land party contestants and see how they're faring playing Battlefield 1942. But next, now is the time when we dance on... Oh, no. You want to dance, change the style of your blog but keep everything else the same? It's all in Sarah's blog report when the screensavers continues. Hey, there's lipstick on my it's coffee. It's color. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Don't accent That's your eyes. <laughs> Wow.
It's the Screensavers Land Party powered by NVIDIA. The party is going on. We're playing Battlefield 1942. Yoshi, are you having fun in there? Are you having a good time? Having fun. I, yeah. I, I'm confident the allies are going to win here. The al are you playing for the ally yes, team? I well, am. then it's okay to be confident for the allies. So are you all allies? No, nah, Kevin's not. Kevin's not. Kevin's. No. A, are you a Nazi? No, I'm an ally, but I'm, I'm killing my own team members. Right? Oh, oh, well, you're, you're a traitor. <laughs> That's, it's kind you're of a traitor. That one. And who's this guy in here? What's your name? I'm Justin. Justin is our new intern. In fact, he's the guy who brought us all coffee. Are you, this is fun. This is what you came here for, right? Of course. Twenty-five dollars a day better. and all the Battlefield 1942 you can play. Definitely. That's awesome. Well, I hope you'll join us in the land party. Don't forget, next week we're going to play again. It's every Thursday on the screensavers. But right now, I'm going to let Kevin introduce. Well, your, your screen moved there, dude. I'll raise the screen while you introduce Sarah because she's got a segment coming. Oh, that's my little love muffin. Hi, yes. love muffin. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Bobby. <laughs> that is disgusting. Okay. Didn't you hear that? <laughs> you two get that. a room, will you? I it's right. your turn, dear. All right. Today's blog report is actually going to be of real use to all you movable type bloggers out there who are trying to decide on your whole blog look. Now, movable type has a handful of default style sheets that you can find here at movabletype.org. Uh, they've got a few, you know, they go through clean, trendy, stormy, whatever. What I did at the beginning was I decided that I wanted my blog to be stormy. So you can see it here, it's kind of clean, it's pretty, it's black. But then I noticed that a lot of other people had the same style. It's a default style, I mean, it makes sense, right? So I wanted to change it. Well, there's a few things that you can do. Two in particular. One is you can either just do like a Google search or something online and find a style sheet that you like. Um, I've actually copied one that I found online. So basically, I'm just going to copy, whoops, select all this text, copy it, and then go into my edit template section of movable type, take out my entire style sheet here, copy in my new style, save it. It'll take a second to save, and then I'll need to rebuild. It's taking more than a second, all right? I'll need to rebuild. It will prompt me, do you, it'll say, do you really want to rebuild? I'll say, yes, I do. Then I'll go back to my blog here and refresh. Wow. And now I have this really fun, exciting, cool, unique blog that, was fast. that I don't think anybody else has. No. Well, <laughs> Except the person you stole it from. Right. <laughs> Except the person I stole it from. <laughs> so now there's one other uh, way that's it's kind of fun that I'll show you today. Let's say that you, you know, go to someone else's site in particular and you like their blog. Um, for I kind of need to go to another movable type blog. So I'm just going to use Morgan Webb's blog as an example. How about another blog that I can, that I can rip off? So I go to View Source. Here in the style sheet area, I'm just going to copy this URL. There's a lot of steps here. I have this all on the website. Oh. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to open that into its own URL. Ooh. Now I'm going to copy all of this text, go back into my template section, erase this stuff, resave again. Then I need to rebuild. Again, it'll say, do you want to rebuild? I say yes. Now, when I go back to my blog, it's it looks Morgan's, like Morgan's blog. Wow. You know, with a slight difference because I don't have her graphic, whatever. But that is how you can rip off someone else's blog. Please don't rip off my blog. Or do. <laughs> I'll just get another one. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Anyway, my step-by-step -step article is on the screensavers.com. And email me your blog tips if you have some good ones. And also the best blogs that you see every day on the web to Sarah at techtv.com. Until then, go read, Leo. All right. All right. That works because uh, movable type uses cascading style sheets. Exactly. And it couldn't be easier. And it doesn't change any text. Doesn't change text? text stays exactly the same. And you notice the graphic doesn't come over, just the styles, which just is the, the colors, style. the fonts, it's the like, sizes. It's like putting on a new outfit. It's really great. Yeah. yeah. Nice job. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned after the break. We've got Smitty on the line. Smitty. Agent Smith. No, not that one. He wants to avoid conflicts with his CPU and his telephone. Huh? Well, we can help, I think. When the screensavers return, stay right here. The that was the version of, of Buffy we didn't use, actually. Wow. That was my audition for Buffy. Yeah. <laughs> Explains a lot. Smitty joins us on the phone from Montgomery, Alabama. How are you doing, Smitty? I'm doing great today. How about yourself? We're wonderful. Excellent. What can we do for you? Well, I've got a 2.4 megahertz Pentium 4 Dell computer, mm -hmm. and I've also got a wireless phone that's 2.4 megahertz. Oh, yeah, Does and if you had Wi-Fi, you'd have... a security problem in here. Did you say a security problem? Uh, yes, as far as um, 
Or interference, you mean? Yes, interference yeah. is from the, somebody just uh, being able to get on land. Oh, yeah, could they listen into his computer? Yes. On the phone? No. Right. Well, okay, there's there's actually a type of, of, of freaking, the name of which... Uh, Van, I, Van, Van, I, Van Eck Freaking. Van Eck but, freaking. But we're not... But right. Now, let me ask you this, because this is an interesting question. Okay. If I have a 2.4 megahertz processor, does that mean it's broadcasting at 2.4 megahertz? Well, in theory, if it's got its FCC B That's how fast it's right? operating. The reason they've got the steel case in, around that is so right. it doesn't turn into a radio and, uh, and radiate lots and lots and lots but and lots of But I don't even think it, if it did, it would be at that frequency, would it? Well, it would. 2.4 gigahertz is 2.4 gigahertz, right? It's a measurement, not a, an absolute. Um, one, no, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to pick up your computer off the telephone. However, if if you don't secure a wireless, two, you know, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz wireless network, people can tap into it. And of course, if you've got really creative neighbors, they can figure out a way to tap into any kind of cell phone that, if it doesn't have a, you know, spread spectrum frequency, digital hopping kind of. Highly unlikely, though, they're using yeah. Vanek freaking to listen to well, your CPU. But Vanek freaking is actually done to read an LCD flat panel. Well, it's it more of a notebook thing. In the realm of possibility, maybe in a lab, not something you got to worry about in your house, and probably no interference issues either. I think you're, I think you're okay. I do appreciate it. Well, that we do appreciate answers a lot of questions. Fear <laughs> not, Smitty, and we do appreciate yeah. you watching the show. Thanks for calling. All right, take care, folks. Stay where you are. We're going to check our inbox to find out what's on your mind, and next we'll find out who's been getting the high scores in Battlefield 1942. Our screensavers land party continues right after this. Tomorrow's Could the Matrix Be Real? A renowned scientist, Peter B. Lloyd, talks about the actual science involved in the Matrix and whether it's possible at all. No, we'll, can you? Mm -hmm. we'll have a round... <laughs> was that the brain? So we'll have a roundup <laughs> of the coolest products from the uh, Big E3 Gaming Expo. Joshua Brantano's back with that. And laptops for the clumsy. Patrick has been beating up some ruggedized notebooks. Will they work? Find out on tomorrow's edition of the Screen Savers. I got a good question here. Where's Morgan? <laughs> Morgan is now co-hosting X-Play every week. She's moved on to bigger and better things, and we're very proud of her. But, of course, now we have Jessica, yeah. and that we're pretty glad to have her, too. So, yeah. Yes, I am filling in. It's hard to fill in those shoes, but we're glad to hear you. Yes, you look good in those shoes, too. Thanks. The high scores from the LAN party today, powered by NVIDIA. We congratulate all of our players, and we hope you'll be back next Thursday. Joshua, even... Joshua, even today, is in the top six once again. Come back, look at him. He's, He's a machine. They're the allies. <laughs> Be afraid. Be <laughs> very it's afraid. It's his focus that makes him so good. Uh, question from Shoreline, Massachusetts. Kyle wants to know what the best program for burning MP3s to audio CDs is without spending any money. Well, if you're on a Mac, you use iTunes. If you're on a PC, try Music Match. Uh, music Match. Yeah, Music Match is great. Yeah. Now, I think if you don't pay for it, it doesn't burn as fast as if you do pay for it. It will not burn as fast. It's like, but, you know. But it'll still burn. It's, it's free. It's free. We like free. Do you know of any programs that can flip the screen upside down? <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that. I, I think I can do I did that earlier in the show. Let, no, maybe not. I better oh, not. See, there's one. <laughs> we just don't know what it's called. We don't know the name of that particular program. Uh, well. Why would you want to? Hey, here we go. Can anyone help? I want to turn a G4 into a PC. I love the G4 case. I want to retrofit an ATX motherboard into it and turn it into a PC machine with the looks of a Mac. A PC <laughs> machine? Oh, that's a good. It's been done, actually. Do, that, do yeah. a search for that on Google. And there's uh, actually a two or three, four or five sites that talk about what is easy and what is not so easy. Well, the G4 case, case. isn't an, is an ATX no. uh, You're going to have to do some case. cutting and some sawing and some stuffing, and you're going to have to fight a lot with the power supply. But it can be done, and it has been done. And I can understand why you'd want it. I especially like the, that door that opens sideways on the uh, G4 cases. Every PC should have something like that. That's very nice. Building a new computer and wondering what is the best without busting the bank motherboard to look for. He's going to do a P4. Uh, I... You know, I bought the Asus P4PE, which I love. Right. And I would recommend that highly. And that's all the time we have. That's it for this edition of the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks to our guests, Larry Lessig and our own Heather Frank. And, of course, to all of you for joining us. Have a great night. Bye-bye.